2014, eh? Wow, that's such a long time ago. I think I should get back into shape. But something is missing to the YouTube video recipe. Well, of course, electronics. How about one of these fitness trackers? Nah, that's too mainstream. Instead I've made a crude but surprisingly well-working ECG amplifier. One of these, if you didn't know what I mean. I'm not doing this running thing for fun, that's for sure. Let me substitute this shot. One electrode goes here, one here, and one to the right leg, of course. And that's it, let's go for a run. Whoops, well this isn't going to work. No, there's got to be a better solution. And I just so happen to have one right here. It's another affordable oscilloscope from Banggood, but this time it really has all it needs to call itself that. Only the display isn't bright enough. So I'll capture the waveform and recall it later. Wait, this is post-production. Anyway, that waveform looks great. I'll quickly do the usual Banggood product video stuff and then I'll show you how the ECG amplifier works. In the box we're getting an alligator tail, a micro USB cable for charging and transferring data, a standard passive scope probe, a BNC pigtail, the scope itself of course, and a bit of cushioning material. It takes a few seconds to boot. But after that it performs great and reacts instantly to user interface input. I don't know about the longevity of these high frequency connectors, but right now they are feeling great. The left one can be a test signal generator or an external trigger input, which is a very rare feature in these budget scopes. Let's take it apart. The enclosure feels a bit squishy, but because there's a large touch LCD, you can't handle this thing so roughly anyway. Oh, that's a substantial battery. 1.3 ampere hours on the datasheet. The layout looks good, but I want to know what that green daughter board is. Probably just a shield for the input circuitry. Yep, that's a shield alright. Temporarily removing that gives us a good view on all the components they have used. This is a DC to DC converter that they probably used to generate a negative voltage for the op amps. This is a $3.250 MHz op amp. This is an analog switch and this is an analog multiplexer. I think this whole arrangement is a variable gain amplifier, which they use for the different volt per division settings. Down here is an electromechanical relay that you can hear clicking when choosing AC or DC coupling. And a very nice solid state relay. Haven't heard that one clicking yet. The main processor is a surprisingly normal 8-bit 80 mega. Feeling the snappiness of the user interface I was 100% expecting an SOC running embedded Linux or something like that. Over in this corner we've got another 80 mega microcontroller and I'm not sure what it is doing to be honest. Surely they wouldn't use an 80 mega just for the battery management, would they? And finally the most important component, a fast 8-bit ADC. For $5 you're getting 20 mega samples per second. Before reattaching the battery, we can also have a look at the power consumption. A little less than 300 mA. Most of that is probably used for the display illumination. Because a battery powered scope is not referenced to mains earth, one might get fooled into thinking that it is okay to do mains measurements with it. And it sort of looks okay too, but now the whole thing is at mains potential and touching an exposed metal surface can be anything between painful or deadly. The display looks nice, but my first thought was that in a single channel scope you aren't getting any value out of a color display. But then again, a high DPI monochrome display is sort of a rarity that may even be more expensive than this one. 
In terms of functionality, this thing is fully loaded. It displays normal waveforms, weird waveforms, and you have full control over everything that matters. Time base, volt per division, coupling, triggering. The trigger level is adjusted by dragging the pink arrow to where you want it. But are you supposed to take a ruler to the display to actually measure something? Of course not. There's a set of measurement functions and draggable cursors. These are working both in stored waveforms and in live mode. That is really nice and totally unexpected in such an affordable device. I like it a lot. For mobile or hobby users I'd recommend it without hesitation. But you should order a plastic tip stylus along with it. And now as promised to the DIY ECG amplifier. I always wanted one of these, and had I known how easy it is to make one, I would have done it a long time ago. But such a simple circuit isn't good enough for running. Heavy breathing and moving electrodes introduce a lot of chaos into the signal. So this eerily perfect one is coming straight from my signal generator. But I stand by my earlier statement, this is all it takes to make an ECG amplifier. A couple of diodes to discharge higher voltages. Capacitors to ground for high frequency rejection. An instrumentation amplifier I've built discreetly. Had I used a pre-made one it would all have been even simpler. An active low pass filter to reject everything above 40 Hz. Finally I'm biasing the whole human to a low but stable voltage using this Zener diode and the lag terminal. So that I don't have to worry about negative voltages. And that's the simplified version of an already simple circuit. I'll leave more information in the description.